Honk I Star Rail is a very fun game, almost too fun to be free to play on most modern platforms. Now, I typically judge a game's quality based on the following factors in order of importance. You got gameplay, characters, story, music, art style slash graphics, whichever you prioritize. And finally, we got uniqueness, as in how well can a game distinguish itself from among its peers. And Honkai Star Rail has exceeded my expectations in almost all of these factors. Gameplay is addicting as hell. There's even a roguelike mode. Two of them actually, in case you weren't hooked just yet. The characters, while not the deepest people you can come across, all have very beautiful designs and are all likable enough. The only ones that really stand out though are our main trio. I just love their whole dynamic. The best way I can describe them is but while well, in Arabic we say dam hum khafif to indicate likableness, I, I can't think of a more appropriate term at the moment. The music goes hard as hell in this game, harder than it has any right to. The song Wildfire shouldn't be anywhere near a free to play game, let alone have it be a freaking final boss theme. Hell, I'd pay $50 just to have it on my playlist. That that was a joke, however, don't actually lock music behind a paywall, please. And oh my god, the way this game looks. Listen, I will never be a frame rate or graphics nerd or whatever, but this game's frame rate is the smoothest thing I have ever laid eyes on. Second only to maybe Zenless Zone Zero, Hoya vs other game, it somehow surpasses Persona 5 up there as being the game with the prettiest turn-based battle system. If you haven't noticed though, there is one, maybe two things keeping me from putting this game up there with the big boys of the JRPG genre, and pretty much holds me back a bit from fully recommending this game to anyone and everyone. It's the story, or rather the storytelling. I want to make a clear distinction here, because you could say that the factor of story could be further divided into two sub-factors. We got lore and we got storytelling. I have no doubt that the game's lore is incredible. I'm not interested in digging for it, but it's complex enough for with all the different outer gods and the different factions or paths as they're called for me to say that yeah a lot of thought clearly went into this but storytelling is how a game chooses to present its lore to the player and that's where honkai star rail stumbles 90 percent of this game's very very long cutscenes are just characters standing around talking about stuff relating to the game's world building rather than their own personal struggles or something which is something i imagine most people would actually care about world building is integral to any Game. don't get me wrong but it should never ever be the main focal point of dialogue and cutscenes and because of this i'm sorry but this game story is unfollowable and incredibly boring in a single sentence these characters will hit you with like four different cases of what i just now decided to call honkai jargon that people like you and me are most likely of course unfamiliar with and the game just expects us to follow along like we were part of the development process or something it feels like i have to have a honkai star rail dictionary on hand whenever i play this game just so i have the faintest idea on what the actual hell is going on in this game when the game starts feeling it's necessary to start adding footnotes in dialogue boxes explaining what words mean that's when we need to take a step back and say, okay, this is clearly not working. Why not make a simpler story? One that everyone can follow along and understand and enjoy. And of course, we have to address the elephant in the room. Gacha. For everything this game does right, it doesn't change the reality of what this game is. A JRPG built on gacha mechanics. Let's not mince words here. Gacha is basically gambling. And being the good Muslim boy that I am, I say, gambling? Astaghfirullah. Thankfully though, you don't actually have to engage with uh, that part of the game to start having fun, so I can continue refusing to pay even a single dime on this game. This fact also ties back with uh, judging a game's uniqueness, cause not only is this a gacha game, it's a fun gacha game. The rarest kind. But never mind that, I would have happily bought this game no question if it was a full on proper JRPG. But the gacha elements hinders other parts of the game as well. I don't know about you guys, but playing as characters who I haven't even met yet in the story 
because I somehow managed to pull them early. And playing as characters who are supposedly supposed to be deceased at to where I currently am in the story takes me out of the experience big time. I, I just can't take the game seriously at that point. Whenever I play this game and find myself having fun, not soon after, I always find myself thinking, God damn it, this could have been something so much more. Also, one final thing, uh, I didn't know where to put this, so I guess I'll just pop it here at the end. Now, while I did say that this game's art style is beautiful, it's still painfully generic. If these characters weren't wearing these overly flashy clothes, I would not be able to pick them out of a line if you're typically recycled generic anime characters. So Jima, Suzuhito, uh, Rui, uh, Inomata, may she rest in peace. All of these artists you could easily identify through their art style. I can't do that with this art. So what I would have appreciated in these uh, character designs is not a change in concepts, those are great, but rather have them look more distinct and unique, because as it stands, nobody here really stands out. Zenless Zone Zero doesn't have this problem though, so I do think that Toyverse is learning. Now if I were to give this game a score, I'd rate it an 8 out of 10. It's a very good game. But unfortunately, no matter how good it gets with future volumes, you can't fix what's already been baked into the game. But nevertheless, I still have to at least applaud Hoyoverse for making the first gacha game I can actually somewhat respect. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I hope Atlas takes notes from Honkai Star Rail whenever they come around to making Persona 6. Uh, not the gacha part, obviously, but just the, uh, the combat, the speed of the combat, and the quality of the animations that play during combat. Because I'm playing episode Igus right now, and while I freaking adore it, I'm kind of missing how smooth playing Honkai Star Rail felt. But uh, yeah, that's all for me for today. I'm making shorter videos these days. Um, I'm still testing out this new setup, so I hope it pays off. If you enjoyed though, please be sure to like the video and subscribe for more gaming content just like this. It really helps me out a lot. So until next time guys, peace.